Hey y'all, Irix Guy here, and I've been using the iPhone 15 Pro for a few weeks now, and I'm going to take it out of its cheap generic case that I bought. You know, it's funny, with the old iPhones, I bought the Apple-branded cases, and they tend to crack around the edges, and I felt that even though the Apple-branded silicone cases, they had a premium feel to them, they cracked around the edges, so I have never will buy another Apple-branded case, so this is just some cheap uh, silicone case. It's very good quality that I got for a few bucks, but... So this is my iPhone 15 Pro. You can see the color I got. And I did just go with the 256 gigs. Uh, the reason I went with the 256 gig storage is, well, I use iCloud, so I just need enough to, to uh, store on the device while I'm out in the field. And then ultimately it's gonna sync with iCloud and I'll, I'll free up my internal storage. Uh, just a way to save money with the, uh, with the iPhone purchase. Now, if money's not an issue for you, you may just go with the largest storage capacity, which is completely acceptable. But uh, I found 256 to be more than enough for my use case. But the design itself, there's been a lot of people, and you can check out the other videos, the quote-unquote iPhone experts. You know who they are, those people with the, the fancy cameras, and they don't have a speck of dust in their, in their filming environment. And, and it's all, uh, you know, it's always positive, this, that, and the other. And, can't say anything bad, you know, you know how that goes. But this is an honest iPhone 15 Pro review. So I'm just gonna tell you, I've been using iPhone. I didn't start with the original iPhone. Actually, I didn't pick up using I, using smartphones. I stayed on the flip phone for a long time. And, uh, but I'm kind of, you know, a late iPhone adopter. But I have noticed that the newer versions of the phone, at least recently, some of the, some of the uh, improvements weren't really that, dramatic so I, I upgraded from the iPhone 12 Pro to this iPhone 15 Pro that I have here I'm gonna put it back in this case before I accidentally drop it but the design of it the titanium there's been a lot of disputes about that it'll bend this that and the other you know what I completely and it hasn't yet but I completely expect this phone to bend and scratch it's something I'm carrying around with me all the time and I'm using it now what I did do and you can find the screen protectors like I used I used a very nice and inexpensive glass screen protector. That's the first thing I put on out of the box. And then this cheap generic uh, case. But you can expand this video's description and click the link there to find the uh, glass screen protector like I use. Super cheap. And, uh, you know, that's something I would do. Obviously, I'm not going to abuse my iPhone 15 Pro. But, you know, whether or not titanium may bend or whatever, I don't know. You know, I'm not going to... I'm not going to start that argument. My purpose for this video is just to provide honest iPhone 15 Pro opinions after using it for a few weeks. I got it pretty much the day it came out. The reason I went with it, and that's probably the first question you're going to have, is, well, why did you, why did you upgrade from iPhone 12 Pro to iPhone 15 Pro? Well, number one, the iPhone 12 Pro, and the, you know, the big thing that, that pushed me to upgrading was the battery life on it, although it was still acceptable, because of the age of the iPhone 12 Pro it was starting to become a little bit degraded. So I didn't, uh, you know, I didn't want to carry around a phone where I didn't have uh, just, you know, the battery life of a new iPhone battery because, you know, I am a businessman, businessman, got to do my business and I'm on the phone. And when I'm doing that, I don't want to have to be like, oh, do I need to charge up? It wasn't that bad yet, but the main thing that drove me to upgrade from iPhone 12 Pro to iPhone 15 Pro was the, uh, well, they switched to USB-C. Now, obviously, Apple didn't switch to USB-C as in Charlie out of the goodness of their heart. It was some sort of European regulation about, I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to get into the politics. But it was politically fueled, and it prompted Apple to switch the device on the, uh, switch the charging and, and uh, data port device on the uh, iPhone from a, proprietary connector which is what iPhones have used for a long time the lightning the lightning cable which I didn't like I found it to be finicky those little leads on the lightning cable would wear out over time so I was thrilled regardless of why it came to the iPhone I was thrilled to have a USB-C cable so that was one of the things that drove me to upgrade obviously the battery life was the primary driver and then most importantly I was able to get a very good deal where it was next to no dollars very few dollars out of pocket uh, by 
by trading in my iPhone 12 Pro and getting this iPhone 15 Pro. So there was an incentive to do that. It just made sense. It was time for me. I don't have to have the latest and greatest iPhone because there's few enhancements, especially when you go from, let's say, 12 to 13 or whatever. I mean, you know, it's there's a minimal amount of uh, improvements. But I will say, and again, this is honest iPhone 15 Pro review, the camera, the still photos of this iPhone 15 Pro, they're dramatically better than the iPhone 12 Pro still photos. The video, not just the low light performance, but the overall image quality and the video stability on the iPhone 15 Pro radically trumps the video quality for my iPhone 12 Pro. So I've got a, a more capable camera in the iPhone 15 Pro. Obviously I've got good battery life because it's, it's a new phone currently and I'm very pleased with it. There's a lot of people, and you don't have to dig too far, but if you, you know, search on Google, you're probably going to find a lot of reports. There's people saying, oh man, the iPhone 15 Pro's battery life's horrible. Well, out of the box, it probably has what's called the always-on display, which in my opinion is an ignorant feature. So, you know, I hope it flashes up there. If it doesn't, you can you can uh, click up there that little button it'll take you to my video but I've got a video a separate video where I explain how to turn off the iPhone 15 Pro's always on display because for me it's ignorant to keep any sort of device powered on all the time the screen that's like a TV in the house you walk out of the room you leave the TV on that's ignorant you're just wasting electricity in that case but an always on display on an iPhone it's consuming the battery life when it shouldn't have to be consumed. The same is true for my Apple Watch. I turned off the always on display on my Apple Watch and I've got a separate video explaining how to do that as well. So I think I'm personally convinced that the battery life complaints that are uh, that are being you know thrown at the iPhone 15 Pro, I think the battery life complaints are probably due to people not realizing, hey I probably should consider turning off the iPhone 15 Pro's always on display. Hmm, that may save battery life. Hmm, common sense in my opinion. But a lot of people don't realize it's always on and I'm not pointing fingers at the people that don't because why would that even be a feature? Anyway, topic for another discussion. The other thing is, is overheating. There's a lot of people saying, oh man, iPhone 15 Pro overheats. You know, you'll see a lot of videos out there talking about that. I will tell you, I've, I carried my iPhone 15 Pro naked for a few days until my cheap and generic case arrived. I didn't notice any any extreme heat. I mean, sure, extended use, the phone can become a little bit warm to the touch. Not hot, but a little bit warm. Likewise, when I put it in my, uh, I got a wireless charging mat in my Acura Integra. It's got a wireless charging mat. When I sit it on that, and, uh, you know, it, it may warm up just a little bit. Now, extended uh, video watching, you know, sometimes I watch, I watch uh, those gold mining shows on that, on that Discovery Channel, and sometimes I'll watch those while I eat or whatever. Now, after watching those for a half hour or so, the iPhone 15 Pro can become a little bit warm to the touch, but it's never been hot. So, I mean, maybe somebody that's reported that, maybe they're just doing it to try to, try to uh, talk negatively about the iPhone 15 Pro, or maybe there were legitimately some bad units, I don't know. But my iPhone 15 Pro, again, I went with the 256 gig, 256 gig storage option, and I do keep it now in this silicone case. Haven't had any issues with the iPhone 15 Pro becoming hot. So I, I there's nothing negative I can say about the iPhone 15 Pro at this point. Again, I've been using it since it came out. I mean, I got it, what, it, the day that it released, or maybe the day after, whenever they shipped it to me. I can't remember. But, I mean, it was within, if it wasn't the first day that it was on the market, it was within a day or, or you know, one day of it, of it releasing. But uh, it's a great phone. Would I go out and upgrade from my previous phone to it? Probably not. In all sincerity, if, if my iPhone 12 Pro, if the battery life hadn't started to become degraded, I probably wouldn't have upgraded. So, and again, the camera's a little bit better. A little bit better photo quality and video quality, but there's nothing there that, and although I did want USB-C, it's not like I had to have USB-C. So, 
my best opinion, my honest opinion rather, is that if you're on the fence, should you upgrade to the iPhone 15 Pro? I would say if your existing iPhone still has strong battery and it's you know not in a degraded state, or you know your existing iPhone, maybe yours is damaged, you dropped it or whatever, I don't know. If your existing iPhone keeps good battery and your existing iPhone is not damaged, I would see no reason to upgrade to the iPhone 15 Pro. That's just my honest opinion. So when the time comes, when your battery starts to become degraded or you know your phone is many years old and it's hitting end of life because of support or whatever, then I would probably consider it. The iPhone 15 Pro, in my opinion, is a great phone. It, the camera, like I said, the camera is the best yet. The photo and the video quality from the camera is the best yet. So from that perspective, it's a solid performer. But is it radically better? And I keep referencing the iPhone 12 Pro because that was my previous iPhone. It's not radically better. It's better. It's noticeably better, but it's not, you know, it's not radically better. So I'm just keeping it honest, man. I hope this video helped. Be sure to subscribe, ring that bell, and check out all of my other videos, too. Thanks for your viewership, and y'all have a good day. Hey, y'all. Captain Irix Guy here. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to subscribe. It's youtube.com forward slash Irix Guy. And ring that bell icon when you do to be notified whenever I post another video. Thanks for your viewership, and y'all have a good day.